Okay, so uh, I have a problem here with a solution already. The problem is to maximize 5x plus 8y subject to the following constraints. x plus 2 thirds y has to be less than or equal to 800. 1 half x plus 1 third y has to be less than or equal to 280. And 1 eighth x plus 1 quarter y less than or equal to 80. And of course we have our non-negativity constraints. I've gone ahead and created a graphical solution here with x on the horizontal axis and y on the vertical axis. You can see my three constraints here are colored in the colors uh, that are next to each specific equation. So my first constraint is yellow. It's this x plus 2 thirds y less than or equal to 800 here. Um, the other two constraints you can see are the binding constraints. Here's my purple constraint. Here's my orange constraint. And you can see I have my objective function drawn in here at the solution value uh, with the solution given as 520, 60. So the uh, quantity of x is 520 and the quantity of y is 60. Okay, so I've given the solution uh, and you can see here that the objective function is bound by these two constraints, the orange constraint and the purple constraint. And you can see its range of optimality is shaded in here. It's, it's bound on the lower end up here by the orange and on the upper end by the purple and of course the opposite once you get past the solution here. Okay, so what I want to do then is if I can see this range of optimality visually, I want to be able to calculate the range of optimality. So I'm going to go ahead I'm going, to do, I'm going to calculate the range of optimality. So before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and calculate the slopes of the uh, curtain equation. So I said that my, my binding constraints were the, the second to the last constraint and the last constraint. So my binding constraints were 1 half x plus 1 third y less than or equal to 280 and 1 8 x plus 1 quarter y less than or equal to 80. So now, if I solve these two equations, the way that I have my diagram drawn, I have the y on the vertical axis and the x on the horizontal axis. That would imply that I had set it up so that y would, would essentially be the, the dependent variable and x would be the independent variable. So if I solve both these equations for y, I would get the slope for each of these equations. I'm not going to do that here, but I am going to show you what the slope actually would be. So for this equation, if I solve this for y, I would get the slope equal to a negative 3 halves. And of course, if you think back to uh, uh, the slope formula being negative uh, Cx over Cy here, you can see that negative Cx over Cy would be negative 1 half over 1 third, and if you solve that, uh, if you simplify that, you would get slope is negative 3 and likewise for the second constraint, my slope was a negative one. Okay? Now, um, my objective function, of course, I have is max 5x plus 8y. And I know then that my slope negative Cx over Cy here. So it's going to be a negative 5 8. Alright, so that means that then my range of optimality I will be using part of A. I'm bound on the one side uh, 
by negative 3 halves it has to be less than or equal to negative 3 x negative 3 y, which is less than or equal to negative 1 half on my upper bound. So if I solve for the range of optimality for C x, of course what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold C y constant at its current value, which is A. So I'm going to have negative 3 halves less than or equal to negative cx over a, which is less than or equal to negative 1 half. So the first thing I want to do is I want to solve my left hand side. So I have negative 3 halves less than or equal to negative cx over a. If I multiply both sides by a negative a, I get 24 halves. And because I multiplied by a negative, that's going to flip my inequality to become a greater than c. It's going to be greater than cx. Of uh, course, simplify, this becomes 12 is greater than c. Now let's look at the right hand side. I have negative c x over 8 uh, less than or equal to negative 1 half. And here if I multiply both sides by a negative 8, I get c x with the inequality because of the negative multiplication. Less or greater than or equal to 8 halves is simplified to 4. So now my range of optimality for Cx then is going to have 4 on the low end and 12 on the upper bound. So it looks like this 4 less than or equal to Cx, which is less than or equal to 12. Okay. So now let's look at the range of optimality for CY. So for CY, I'm going to plug in my original value for CX and hold it constant. So I'll have negative 3 halves is less than or equal to negative 5 over CY, which is less than or equal to Alright, so let's look at the left hand side first. I get negative 3 halves is less than or equal to negative 5 over C1. Uh, I'm going to multiply both sides by CY. So I get negative 3 halves CY is less than or equal to negative 5. Uh, multiply both sides now by a positive two-thirds, and I get CY. Flip the inequality because I multiplied by a negative. It's greater than or equal to ten thirds. So that's going to be the lower bound. Now, uh, on the right-hand side, I get negative five over CY. Less than or equal to negative one half. Multiply both sides by CY, and I get negative five is less than or equal to negative one half CY. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by negative two, and I'm going to flip the inequality. So this is going to be CY is now less than or equal to two times five, which is uh, ten. And I put these two inequalities back together, and I get on the lower end, I have 10 thirds, which is approximately 3, that's not approximately, equal to 3 and 1 third. 3 and 1 third is less than or equal to C1, which is less than or equal to 10. That is the range of optimality for the y coefficient of my objective function.
And so I could say uh, to my manager that if we're looking to change the coefficient of y as long as it's not less than three and a third or greater than 10, uh, my solution value for uh, my objective function will remain uh, what it currently is. And for the coefficient of x, I could say as long as uh, you don't change it to anything below 4 or above 12, it will leave the solution value.